We're starting this conversation on the issue of ethical practice and also especially within the confines of the real estate industry vis-a-vis -vis other practice in Nigeria, other professionals. But this is very important that we start this conversation because it's been going on for quite a long time. And in recent times, the conversation continued. And at every point in time, from Nigeria Bar Association to Nigeria of Architects, Nigeria Institute of Institution of Estates of Wales, yep. every part of this country today is talking about ethical practice because competition is coming. And therefore, we have the opportunity of uh, having with us today uh, a very renowned estate of surveyors and valuers, past president of the Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, and someone who has also paid his due, but is still paying his dues because he is still very, very, very active and mentoring quite a number of practitioners. I'm talking about estate surveyor, but they are DDG. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining yes. us. Now, now let's, let's start from the beginning. You started okay. over 40 years ago. That's correct. And you must have met what we may call in Nigeria some kind of practice. That's right? correct. That actually made you to believe that I want to stay here That's right? correct. in this profession. That's correct. Because first thing, integrity, trust, and the rest of them. So That's now, 40 years down the line, you know, you compare that period to now, are there difference? Oh, a lot of differences, but in no ramification. Within the last 40 years, there have been enormous differences in the way yeah. we behave as human beings. Okay. There has been a lot of difference in the political architecture of Nigeria. There has been a lot of difference even in the religious and social and educational architecture of the country. So going out to the realm of the profession, there has been an enormous difference between the way we used to run our lives as professionals 40 years ago, 30 years ago, and the way we now run all these professions. No doubt about that. We know about in terms of the growth of the, of the industry and the number of people practicing now, it may be few at that time, you know, would, would this be attributed to pressure? Well, there are a lot of reasons and factors that one can attribute to the enormous decline in the standard that people like us grew to know, developed in, and tried to sustain, and what is happening now. For instance, in those good old days, we used to have a common goal between the consultants, yeah. and the clients but today that is no longer the case the consultants want to make money at all cost but the clients want to have value mm. for whatever is investing in power, upon now what are the basic factors that one can pinpoint one is that in any country where you have weak institutions ethical standard and realities tend to decline fall or in some cases vamos in nigeria today we are getting to that precipice where ethics will not matter in many areas of life anymore in politics in religion in family institutions and so on and so forth we don't pray for that because we need to actually see this country as the only one we have. Yes. Now, secondly, you find that where you have poverty, okay. ravaging poverty, then things like moralities, ethics, standard tend to decline. It's only this year that we are told Nigeria now has overtaken India as the poverty capital of the world. Some might think these are alibi or excuses, but whether you are black or white or pink, human beings are the same all over the world. Where a man or a woman is being threatened by abject poverty, yeah. moralities, ethics, take second position. The other one we must bear in mind 
is the emergence of rat race that younger ones who have just started to learn how to become seasoned architect seasoned doctors seasoned of valuers seasoned lawyers the goal is just one thing make money and then you can submerge all other deficiencies or attributes as you like so in totality what i'm trying to say is that unless there is a revolution in the way we think unless there is a revolution in the way we work and unless there is a revolution to change the kind of dichotomy i perceive now where the old generations think that what matters most is now what befalls the incoming generation it's not their business. Mm. And until we address that reality, we'll just be lagging behind virtually in all areas of life. This is not being sanctimonious or being a preacher. Or, no. Because I always tell people nowadays that things that people attribute to either religious tendency or philosophical tendency or holier than thou attitude, they are not the laws of nature. The laws of reality, nobody, nobody can tamper with them. Yeah. When you tamper with them, there are consequences. Take a look at sensitivity to timekeeping. Nigeria has rubbish that. You will have to have a leader, either in the family, or in the business, or in the politics, or in religion, that would understand and carry out things timelessly. If you give 10 o'clock appointment, it is 10 o'clock. The illusion of African time is African poverty. The idea where a man will wait at the airport for three hours to catch a plane that takes only 45 minutes between Lagos to Abuja is an anomaly. But it takes strong leaders across the sector to bring realities and atonement to all these infractions that we, com we commit every day without any regard to their repercussion. I see students nowadays that resumption time is 8 o'clock and they are leaving their parents' home at about 8.30. Now, why we should be able to be sensitive to all this you are reading about ethic is simply this our country now lags behind in virtual every aspect of human facet let us talk call a spade a spade but thank goodness our leaders travel there are problems all over the world nobody should actually pretend that problems are limited to nigeria but first and foremost, you will see conscious efforts in so many countries where active desire, backed by active efforts to ameliorate all these problems, are in place on a daily basis. And as soon as a new problem arises, school of thoughts, Pressure groups, leadership examples will converge to address them yeah. and solve them. But in Nigeria, we always wait until problems become compounded and get to a point of tragedy before we have a wake-up call. The only instance of so many other ones that were are in this country was during the short period of Ebola. Yeah. Had it been that woman at that level had been selfish, parochial, uncommitted, only God knows what damage Ebola would have caused to Nigeria. So we need, and I always want to say to people, don't let us pass the buck to the desk of our leaders all the time. Oh, this country is not moving well. 
is caused by the president or by the governor or by the minister have you joined any pressure group to actually let them know that this thing should be done we always fold our arms thinking that what ought to be done by all of us at the individual level at the family level at the corporate level we transfer all of them either to abuja that's a dilemma <laughs> It was a great honor, and I'm really honored that um, CD Magazine, which is the foremost industry magazine in Nigeria, and I hope eventually will be the foremost magazine in Africa, because I really support what you're doing. A nation or a group of people can't move forward without knowledge, and if they try, they'll sink. If you look at any country in the world right now which is moving ahead, it's based on knowledge economies. It's not based on voodoo or whatever you like. It's based on knowledge. Uh, my profession, architecture, is based entirely on knowledge. Uh, one of the greatest architectural historians in the world, Sir Vanessa Fletcher, British uh, architectural historian, called architecture the noblest of the arts. Why the noblest? Because it combines science, mathematics and arts. The, 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 the other aspect of it now is the fact that you have enumerated it and we have all agreed okay. that this is across all sector. That is true. All practice. That is true. From the aviation. As a matter of fact, this is a coincidence. I participated in the lecture given yesterday at the Obafemi Aulo University by no other person than the octogenarian uh, uh, Chief Afawalala, a 90-year-old man doing a lecture on the law and the ethical practice vis-a-vis -vis the medical profession. And when you look at the way this man went into history and went into why the Nigerian medical environment will continue to go down if we don't embrace ethical practice, rule of law, and so on and so forth. And he went on to say why some of these problems are being compounded is that everything seems to have concentrated in Abuja. So that failure of medical service delivery system in a local government is now transferred to Mr. President in Abuja. And he said, if that be the case, that unless we go forward and restructure the country, we can take responsibility that when a guy is doing something that is wrong, he must be held accountable. But where you have leaders that are either faceless, anonymous, unconcerned, talking about Nigerian problem from time to time is a waste of time. And I concur with him. But what I believe in is that restructuring or no restructuring. Even that restructuring must start at the individual level. That we cannot be a non-timekeeper. We cannot have a gross sense of irresponsibility. And when the consequences all converge, we then point our fingers, uh, accusing fingers to either Mr. President or Mr. Governor. That is that point at which at all times I always disagree with my fellow Nigerians. We are all in here together and we must rescue Nigeria all together. Now, first and foremost, uh, the institution will be 10, 50 years. Yes, that's correct. Year. That's correct. And which means uh, 10 years down the line, we started practicing after it came on board. That's correct. All right. And uh, the founding fathers today will look back and say, look, fine, we've had some precedents yeah. and that have made very tremendous impact on yeah. us, standing the course. Yeah. Uh, you know, therefore, for you to have been part of that body that actually uh, mm. uh, uh, grew that institution to this mm. level, yeah. so you yeah. understand the practice of quackeries and all those kind of things that yeah, to some extent. impact yes. on the practitioners themselves. Yeah. So can you speak briefly about the institutions the regulatory body mm. relationship, which mm. means that the, the essence of yours registration, you know, essence of yours and value as registration can yeah. 
and then vis a vis the practitioners. And yeah. also, if you re remember recently, Lagos State also is trying to harmonize yeah. their party practice. In other words, telling the estate agents yeah. to come and also register. Yeah. And also, your institution also yeah. is also because. You want you are what you are trying to do hopefully is to just accommodate everybody and be able to come yeah to so yeah. can you speak on well thank you very much and i would like even to say uh, a few things along that line from historical perspective let us bear in mind that in all situation we are trying to describe there will be certain parties to read in the estate profession you have three parties the registered estate social and valuers and the institution that govern them which is naives yeah. and esbabon to the government and all its institutions that are in charge of professional bodies and regulations then the public let me start from the public uh, because of our historical antecedent and the way estate as a profession and a business uh, develop, um, people still believe that they can shortchange themselves through patronizing quacks yeah. rather than going to those that can do the job and when they fail to do it very well they can be held accountable that's a major major problem now you then come to ourselves as professional people there are two issues concerning that the rat race to make money has been a problem then the non-compliance or observance of a reality that in any profession, there will be certain aspects of that profession that require specialization. Yeah. And if I know that uh, this gentleman is a cardiologist, I will not take my wife is pregnant to a cardiologist if you have somebody, a gynecologist is there. To the scale of the job, if a man is in trauma, you don't recruit a doctor who left school two years ago to go and handle a man who is involved in a trauma, either accident or sudden something like that. What do we have in Nigeria? A government will want to take advisory services on a mega estate. A, the government picks either somebody who is a political loyalist or a relative or somebody from your tribe is only to an extent in areas of two areas in this country today law and medicine that Nigerians don't sentimentalize so what I'm trying to say about that is that let us know if I'm a surveyor what are my core competence areas for this company I know that even though we are the pioneer multi-disciplinary professional firm in Nigeria, there are still certain things I hardly do. If you ask me today to go and make 10 million either in Niger Delta for compensation to the local community, value the asset and pay them, we don't have the capacity and the uh, core culture to handle all the challenges that are inherent in such an assignment. So I would recommend those who are based there, who know the local community, their sentiment and so on, to do so. We've talked about related examples, we've talked about... Thank you. Uh, so there are two things I would like to just, uh, you know, get some insight into. 40 years down the line, yeah. how, how do you feel? Are you fulfilled? I feel fulfilled, but any man who will look back and look ahead, you see so many milestones that a couple of years ago were your ambitions yeah. and targets.
starting from my country, I would have loved to see a country that enthrones professionalism yeah. and meritocracy. Unfortunately, I'm moving closer and closer to 70. That is no longer in the radar. But as far as personal things that human beings or Nigerians um, uh, 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 crave for or struggle uh, to attain, God has done much more for me in all those areas than I can ever, ever have dreamt about. The other one is to see yourself as a political animal that even though you are not an office seeker, you are not a politician, but in terms of your life scale, the, 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 the landscape, in terms of security, in terms of uh, youth, youthful people, bubbling with energy, going to work, all of them being employed, those are not realities on the ground. In terms of saying that 20 years ago, it used to take me one hour 10 minutes to drive on a first class road from Lagos to Ibadan. That's no longer on the radar. So you can look at all this, that in those days, I would stay in Abuja, do my work, and call on my friend and drive by about 8 p.m. to go and do a party in Kaduna. If you are still sane, that you are not insane, that is no longer possible. So in totality, we have every reason to thank God, but we have a lot of work to transform Nigeria into this abysmal, into something that can be of a proud legacy to the upcoming generations. Yeah. There was something that was never part of us in this part of the world, charity. What was that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Without, even the churches don't even do charity. <laughs> well, you well. see the, the likes of Big Gate, Warren Buffet coming in here to cure up children yes. for us and all of that with all the work they have made. But yes. it's becoming something now. So yes. uh, people are adopting that now. So is there anything in the radar you're doing now and, and how is it going? Well, 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 let me just make a, a general comment about those that God has blessed, but are yet to be sensitized or inspired to bless others. I travel a lot, and all over the world, I've seen people who are extremely wealthy, but in terms of Thinking of how to touch lives or knowing how to touch lives, all these are still a far cry from their psyche. Yeah. But the beauty about life is this those who possess everything and those who possess nothing will come to this world and leave this world. So what should be the goal of everyone? And I like the way some of the frontline pastors, preachers, imam, and sheikhs in Nigeria put it. And it's my own advice. Don't wait until you become a thousandaire before you start touching lives. Don't wait until you become a millionaire before you start changing lives. Now, don't wait until you become Mr. President or Mr. Governor or Mr. Minister before you begin to think how you can transform the landscape. That is not a matter of using your personal money alone to feed people, but to create an environment where people who stay there will be fed, well fed, will be taken care of in terms of health facilities, will be proud of themselves because they have personal human dignity. Unfortunately, in Nigeria today, the crop of our leaders all over 
they are yet to open their eyes to the challenges that it is not a matter of getting this kind of money through that source of that and then pumping one tenth of it into charity yeah. and spend another twenty percent to broadcast that charity to the public. Yeah. Uh, we thank God because some five years ago I was inspired uh, to um, take a look at my small town, Ada, in Oshun State. Yeah. And we, myself and my family, we st struggled to just package a small community uh, hospital. On the day of opening last week, about 2,500 people reported in ADA for medical treatment from all over Washington State. Mm. So that is not something that one can begin to broadcast. Yeah, cool. But if it serves the purpose yeah. of saying that to solve Nigeria problem, government alone cannot do it. And two, it doesn't have to be that you have to be a millionaire before you can see people in need and help them. Why do I say that? Have you come across people that after you have given free malaria drugs to them and they look at yourself that even if I take this medicine, there is no food to make it work. That is the challenge that you and I face. But once we focus on the following, I'm sure we'll get that destination. One is that God is much more important than anybody or any country. Two, power is ephemeral. You have it today, you don't have it tomorrow. Three, you can have power. You can have money, but something fundamental can still be lacking in you, and only God yeah. can provide it. Above all, I'm a believer in a very strong, united, and prosperous Nigeria. And when it takes about five years or ten years, one day, surely, we'll get there. <laughs> Thank you it's so, a much. so much. It's, it's a, a pleasure. It's, it's quite an It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure.